Everyone wants to eat healthy, but no one seems to have the time. Meal planning seems like that one additional annoying thing to do, but in reality, it's gonna save you tons of time during a busy week. Hi, my name is Trudy Stone, and I help you to take control of your brain and your health in the kitchen. And today I'm gonna be sharing my five-step meal planning system that's gonna help you to get meals on the table in no time. The first two only take 10 minutes. So the first step is to always have a collection of favorite recipes that you can refer to. I have about 10 to 15 recipes that I rotate throughout the weeks because that way I don't get bored. The bonus is that all of these recipes have similar ingredients, so it saves me time and it saves me money because I don't have to buy 88 different ingredients when I go to the grocery store. You'll also save frustration because you won't always have to be thinking about what to make. This is great during those days when you feel lazy or when you're feeling uninspired. I recommend keeping the ingredient list short for those recipes, so about eight ingredients or less. You can head to my website if you're looking for some inspiration. Once you've chosen your favorite recipes, what I recommend is just keeping those recipes in the notes app on your iPhone. And then that way, before you head out to the grocery store, you can just refer to that list of recipes. Now, speaking of the grocery store, that leads me to step number two, and that is to have a grocery list. Never, ever head to the grocery store without having that grocery list. Trust me, I've been there, didn't work out so well. Now, once you have all of those favorite recipes, I want you to start another note in the notes app on your phone. And in that note, I want you to list out all the ingredients that you're gonna need for those recipes. Make sure that you title it weekly grocery list. And then that way you have all the ingredients in that weekly grocery list based on your favorite recipes. Now I want you to take a look at this before you head out to the store and just remove and add things as necessary. Again, this is gonna save you a lot of time. These first two steps alone should take you about 10 minutes. Now if this is making sense to you, I want you to type prep into the comments below. Now the third step is to pick the best day of week for your meal prep. I know a lot of people recommend Sundays, but that might not always be the best day for you, depending on what it is that you have going on in your life, depending on if you do shift work. So just make sure that you pick the best day for you that you know that you can actually stick to. For example, what I do is on Saturday evenings, I'll head out to the grocery store because it's quieter then. And then on Sundays, that's when I do my meal prep. So it should take you about two hours to do your meal prep on Sunday or on your meal prep day. Now, the really important thing with meal prep is to make it fun. So what I do is I throw on some music, I crank up those tunes and I get busy in the kitchen. Now I make it fun. I make meal prep something that I look forward to because if you look forward to it, you're more likely to do it. So maybe what you do is on your Sunday, you look at all of your new music for the week, check out some of the new songs that came out and then just add a new playlist and get in the kitchen and get cooking. Another tip that I have is to get your kids involved. By getting your kids involved, it'll make them excited about what they're gonna be eating for the week. Another thing that I recommend is making big batches. So make big batches that you can use either for leftovers for dinner, leftovers for lunch, or to be frozen to be enjoyed later. Step number four, don't use recipes. Now I know you're thinking, what, she just told me to get recipes, put them in my template, put them on my phone, okay. So the reason why I say don't use recipes is just because sometimes you don't feel like following a recipe. So here's what you can do if you don't feel like following a recipe and then when you get home and when you're tired. Again, this all comes down to meal prepping. So you're still gonna have to do a little bit of that prep work on Sunday or on your meal prep day. Okay, so for meal prepping without a recipe, I want you to keep three things in mind. Leafy greens, veggies, and protein. That should be the basis of your meal. With these three things alone, you can make soups, you can make stews, you can make stir fries, you can make wraps. The list is really endless. So batch cook your protein and your veggies and use them for mixing and matching throughout the week. So for example, I like to have a green salad just about every day. So I'll roast my veggies, I'll make sure that I have my leafy greens set aside, and then I'll have my protein. So my protein is either chicken or it's fish, or sometimes it's like beans or lentils. Then I'll make two salad dressings. I'll make one that's a little bit creamier and I'll make one that's more oil-based. And the reason why I do that is because that way it gives me variety in the meals and it feels like I'm always eating something a little bit different. And the trick with the salad dressings is to make them three ingredients or less. You can make an amazing salad dressing using only three ingredients. This will save you a lot of time. If you'd like to see how I do this, type 
crap again in the comments below and I'll put together a video showing you exactly how I make my amazing salad dressings. Step number five is to invest in an instant pot or a slow cooker. You can save so much time by having one of these. As a matter of fact, a slow cooker was key to helping me to lose 30 pounds. Now, when I came home at the end of the day, I was too tired to throw together meals. So what I would do is just toss everything into the slow cooker in the morning before I headed out the door to work. And then that way, when I came home after work or after doing my workout, I had a hot meal ready to go. Now I really recommend the Instant Pot because it's both a pressure cooker as well as a slow cooker. So you get two tools in one device so it saves space in your kitchen and also saves money as well. Now it saves you time as well when you're cooking beans. So for example, when you're cooking dry beans, typically you have to soak them several hours or overnight. Now when you put them in the pressure cooker, you don't have to soak them overnight and you can cook them in minutes. As a matter of fact, cooking beans in a pressure cooker is actually better for you. And that's because when you pressure cook your beans, it kills off the plant proteins called lectins, which can be harmful for some people. So for example, some people have a really hard time digesting beans. Some people who have IBS, so irritable bowel syndrome, also really have a hard time digesting beans. And then for some people, it just makes them really gassy. So by pressure cooking your beans, it burns off those lectins that will help to avoid that discomfort. Also, I find that when I use my slow cooker, my food is just so much more flavorful. And if you know me, I love flavor in my food. So, highly recommend that slow cooker. You know what, just get yourself an Instant Pot and then you have the best of both worlds in one device. Now, I hope that you enjoyed that five-step system. For even more recipe inspiration, I highly recommend that you click on the link in the description below to grab Bare Essentials. This is a checklist of all of the foods that you should have in your kitchen at all times to throw together really quick and easy meals. Again, you can grab it by clicking on the link in the description below. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you went ahead and clicked the like button and then also make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss the next video. Thanks for watching.